What up, ladies and gentlemen? Tyler here, TarverAcademy.com. Big thanks to LearningBird.com for sponsoring this video. Let's get our learn on, shall we? Okay, so what we're looking at right now, we're looking at the how to find the area of a hexagon, heptagon, and an octagon. I don't know. Okay, so hexagon is six sided, hept is seven, oct is eight. Okay, we're gonna use the same formula for all three of these. Okay, it just kind of changes the um, us finding out how to get them. Okay, so here we go. Um, so for instance, the formula for area of all three of these is area equals one half the apothem times the perimeter. Okay, that little a, we'll say big A is area, little a is apothem, and P is perimeter, okay? I would guess, if this is the first time you've talked about this, um, you know what area is. It means all the stuff inside of there. Perimeter, you know, that's the length around it. Um, and then apothem, you're probably like, what the jazz is that? Well, I'm going to show you. The apothem goes from the center of our polygon all the way straight down to one of the sides. Now you could do it from there to there, any of there, as long as it's your straightest point. And we know from our rules of geometry, anytime you go from a point to a line at its, at its closest proximity, it's gonna make a right angle, okay? So you know this is a right angle right here. But that's your apothem, that's your little a, okay? Now we just need to find out our, our, our big A, which is our area, by knowing the apothem and the perimeter, okay? So for instance, let's say we have on this, we know that um, a side length is five, okay? So if this is a regular hexagon, which means all the angles and sides are equal, we know that all these are five. So we would just do five times the amount of sides, which would be five times six, which is 30, okay? So we have our perimeter. We are almost there. All we need now is our apothem, okay? So we do one half apothem times what we know, which is the perimeter, which is 30, okay? So if I know that is 30, I know that this length, well, I know that's 30 because those are all the same, and if I know these are all the same, I know this length right here is also five from there to there, correct? Now, if I'm trying to find this right here, I'm gonna have to use some geometry, okay? I'm gonna have to figure out essentially what this side length is. Now I know, I know this side length, from here to here, don't I? Because if that's five, this is half of that, which is 2.5, all right? Now, I don't know this right here, but I can use my, uh, some formulas uh, that we've done in geometry to figure that out, all right? What we do is we split this up to a bunch of triangles, okay? When we do that, we know that all the way around is how many degrees? We know that all the way around is 360 degrees. Now, if I wanted to find the measure of each of these interior angles right here, I know there's gonna be six angles, one, two, three, four, five, six. I just divide 360 by six, which gives me 60. So I know this length right here is 60 degrees, correct? Now, do I need that whole thing? No, I just need this triangle right here. That's why I only need 2.5. I know my A is one side of my triangle, and then now I know this right here. If that whole thing's 60, I'm cutting that in half, that means that angle has to be 30 degrees. If you don't mind, I would like to transport, transporter two, starring Jason Statham, that triangle over here. I'm just gonna make it bigger so we can see what we know. We know apothem's there, we know that's 2.5, and we know this is 30 degrees. Now we're gonna, usually what we'd have to do on these things is use, um, Sokotoa, which is uh, Katoa, which we know is sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent is opposite over adjacent. Um, or if you need something to remember it by, some old hag caught another hag tripping on acid. Don't tell anybody I said that. Um, and so that's what you would use. However, this is what we call a special right triangle. Okay, that means that it is a either a 45, 45, 90 degree triangle or a 30, 60, 30, 60, 90 degree triangle which we know if that's 30 and that's 90, this has to be 60. Okay, so we get to use a little bit of math to work this out. All right, so we know our 30 side is always exactly half of the hypotenuse, correct? 
So we know that the hypotenuse is always double whatever the 30 is. So we would just double that and make that there. And then we know that the adjacent angle to the 30 is always whatever this is times radical 3. So we know that's 2.5 times radical 3. Did we find something we needed? Yes, we did. So what I would do is I would plug this in for a potham. So it would be 1 half times 2.5 2.5 times radical 3 times 30. And I can find my area, which we're going to need a calculator. Ooh, calculator. I don't know if I have a calculator. All right, so I'm going to use what's probably the oldest calculator ever to figure out this answer. So usually what you want to do is you want to deal with your most um, strange numbers first. So radical 3, and then we can just turn this into 0.5. If we know 1 half is that, it just makes it easier. So you just do radical 3 times, so I'll do radical 3 times 0.5 times 2.5 times 30 equals 64.95. And then whatever we're dealing with, say this is inches, that'd be inches squared, centimeters, would be centimeters squared, whatever. And we found the area. Now for heptagon and octagon, you're going to do the exact same thing. The only thing that'll change is if the perimeter is a different amount, and you've got seven sides or eight sides, and then your interior angle amount, okay? Here, our interior angles are 60. For every hexagon, it's always gonna be 60 degrees inside of there, okay? For heptagon, it's gonna be 360 divided by seven. And I cheated, it's around 51 point something, and so that's not as pretty, but it's what you gotta use. All right, and then for octagon, you just do 360 divided by eight, which is something and a half, which is 45 total. I was not, I was kidding, it's not a half. So it'd be 45 degrees in there. So octagon and hexagon are easier because you get a cleaner angle. Heptagon's a little different. I wouldn't make it a decimal. I would make it something to where it's like something over something else, like a division thing. So it'd be like 360 over seven. All right, that's gonna be your best bet. So you just learned how to find the area of hexagons, heptagons, and octagons. Primarily hexagons, but you got all three. Hope you, I hope it helped, I hope you learned. Hope you follow your dreams. Check out learningbird.com and tarveracademy.com. Boom! Boy! Bye! Hey, Tyler here. Don't forget to subscribe. Check out tarveracademy.com.